Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Chromebook Pixel, which is a premium Chromebook. It's a laptop designed to run Google Chrome OS. It's about 0.6 inches thick, weighs about 3.3 pounds, has USB ports, display port, headset jack, power, Chrome, SD card slot, and uh, it's designed by Google. It's the first Chromebook actually designed by Google and not Samsung or Acer. It's manufactured in China according to the little thing on the back here. Gets about five hours of battery life. Has an Intel Core i5 processor with Intel HD graphics. Uh, 32 gigs to 64 gigs of storage, Wi-Fi or 4G LTE, and a uh, LED up here that shows different colors. So actually when you open it up, you can actually see the LED changes colors. And let's actually go through that process of opening it up one more time. So you can see it's turning off. And that's how quickly it resumes from sleep. In terms of the uh, other premium software here, we've got, or uh, hardware here, we've got backlit keyboard designed specifically for Chrome with uh, certain keys, for instance, for using the browser and other functions, back keys, brightness keys, volume keys. It's a uh, glass, etched glass touchpad, which is actually one of the nicest touchpads that I've uh, felt on a laptop. Uh, the keyboard's pretty good. It's a Chiclet or Island style keyboard with isolation between the keys. It does flex a little bit in the, uh, in the center though, so as you push down, you can actually see the whole keyboard sort of move down with it. Um, but overall, it's a pretty good keyboard, has pretty good travel. So let's go ahead and minimize a couple of things here and uh, take a quick look at some of the other functions, which include this display, which is really the, uh, the thing that sets this apart from everything else more than any other feature. This display is a 12.85 inch display 2560 by 1700 pixels, so it rivals uh, like a MacBook with a retina level display in terms of pixel density. It's 239 pixels per inch, edge to edge glass, and it supports touch. So you can see we can bring up an app launcher, we can bring up applications and so forth by touching. Um, it does wobble a little bit more than I would expect given that it's a, a premium notebook. And when we say premium, what are we talking about here? $12.99. So this thing costs about six times more than some of the other Chromebooks that are on the market. It's really designed as a device for people who uh, who already are probably into the Chrome ecosystem, spend most of their time online, and could get away with using something less, like this as a primary notebook. So whereas a $200 or $250 Chromebook, I think, is something that you'd use as a secondary device, doesn't need to have a lot of storage, doesn't need uh, to have the fastest processor, because it's really your on-the-go device this is a premium device that's really meant for people who can get by doing everything on the web. And so, you know, in, in terms of what you can do on the web these days, there are any number of different applications that'll do everything from edit photos and video for you, um, create documents and so forth. Um, this device is a little bit less useful when it's not online, but when it is online, you can even remote control a Windows laptop or do something along those lines. Uh, it does a pretty great job with video and audio. This is a demo video that came with it. Let's go ahead and brighten the screen so you can see it a little bit better. And it's really designed to, to sort of show off the capabilities of the uh, display. Let's go ahead and close that. In terms of uh, websites, we've got this three by two aspect ratio display. Um, doesn't support some of the things that you might expect on, say, an Android device, like pinch to zoom here, but you've got scrolling, and you can also use gestures here, and realizing that I need to dim the display now so that things look better on camera. Um, and it's very responsive, very fast. And part of that is because we've got this Core i5 uh, processor, but part of it also is that the way Chrome works is to um, uh, basically run the operating system, the browser, everything's running it from RAM. So uh, it's much faster than storage, even the fast solid state storage that comes with this particular, particular device. So it's overall pretty responsive, and since you spend a lot of time sort of scrolling up and down when you're surfing the web, in a lot of ways something like this makes sense with not a widescreen display. But if, like me, you're the sort of person who spends a lot of time uh, with two websites side by side, it can be a little bit trickier because you'll see here that we don't necessarily have a lot of room for two full pages. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit problematic for professionals who might want to have full content side by side. 
Another thing that's a little bit odd about the screen is if you, for instance, want to watch a movie on Netflix, let's go full screen, and let's uh, brighten up the screen a little so you can see it better here. You've got black bars above and below the display. Um, it's not the end of the world to have some black bars above and below the display, but it's clearly not the same sort of multimedia experience that you would get from something that has a widescreen display. So there's a little Netflix for you. Same thing should be true for uh, YouTube. So again, we've got the bars below and above the screen. Now we are watching HD quality video here, um, so there's no problem with that. Uh, pretty much anything you can do with Chrome on a web browser on a Windows machine you can do here. The advantages to running Chrome OS though are, um, among other things, you've got that sort of instant boot, instant sleep. All of your data is stored online, so uh, if anything happens to your Chromebook, you can pick up where you left off just by grabbing another machine. Um, and just sort of the overall experience, it's just a lot faster, you can get online instantly. I find myself using Chromebooks almost the way that I would use a uh, tablet, where it's a device that you grab when you've just got a couple of seconds that you need to get online and do something. The difference is you've got this full keyboard, so you can do a lot more in many ways than you can do with touch. It's nice having the touch. It's the sort of thing where when I first heard about uh, Windows and other laptops that were going to be coming out without capabilities of, uh, or with uh, touch screens, I thought, why would you want to touch on a notebook? Who's going to reach up? You're going to sort of hurt your arm. But depending on how you're sitting or standing or what you're doing or if this is on your lap, it often does make sense to just reach up and touch the screen to maximize, minimize, drag, drop, launch applications, and so forth. Um, so it's the sort of thing that you get used to pretty quickly, and for many functions, having touch is nice. Now that we've got the first uh, Chromebook to actually ship with uh, touchscreen display, I suspect it's not going to be that long before we start to see touch-specific applications, um, drawing applications, other things showing up in the uh, Chrome Web Store. So if you go look at the Chrome Web Store right now, there's games, there's uh, productivity apps, entertainment apps, all sorts of different things, and pretty soon we're probably going to start to see apps that really are designed to take advantage of this high quality display and this um, uh, touch capability. So um, is it worth $12.99? That's sort of a difficult thing to say. Uh, at $12.99, this thing is really competing with something like a MacBook as opposed to a $200 Chromebook or a netbook. Um, but it's a premium quality device, has a couple of quirks like that flex in the keyboard and the bounce here. Uh, I'd say the biggest quirk is probably the $12.99 price tag, and that's for a Wi-Fi only model. This particular version actually uh, has Verizon 4G LTE and sells for even more. Um, so I am uh, not considering this a full review so much as a first look. Um, Google loaned this to me. I have a couple of weeks to play with it, and I want to sort of see how I can fit it into my life, and I'll, I'll come back and share some more impressions. But after spending just a little time with it, I wanted to share my initial impressions with you. This is Brad Linder from Lilliputing, and you can find more details at lilliputing.com on this and all sorts of mobile technology.